Today I'd like to give you an annual update about our vector control program and present you with aerial spraying resolution. I truly believe we have one of the best vector control programs in North Texas. And the reason I believe so, we have more traps per square miles than any other city. And we have very knowledgeable staff. Every year we have to deal with a new virus and new mosquito coming to our city. And the staff knowledge is becoming increasingly important every year. Because in order to kill mosquitoes, we have to understand the biology of the mosquito. That's why I feel very confident of the staff that we have. If you look at this map real quick, uh, we divided the city of Coppell to six different mosquito management areas. In each area, we have a trap. We collect, we, we trap every Thursday afternoon, collect the mosquitoes on Friday morning, send it to Dallas County for testing, and we get the results on Monday afternoon. As soon as we get the results, if it's positive, it triggers a chain of reaction. Number one, we start by notifying our residents that we do have a, a mos positive mosquito sample in their area, and we will be spraying within 24 hours that affected area. We do, we do that by multiple of choices. We do that by using Everbridge. Uh, basically, we use email, phone, mail, uh, phone, phone calls, text message, and we update all our websites, the city main websites and our environmental health websites as well. And we use all method of social media to make sure that we reach and teach every resident about what's going on in their neighborhood. Every effective uh, vector control program should have six components. But if you really want to look at the acronym and SLAB, and that's exactly what vector, vector control program is all about. The first, the first component we have is surveillance. We use two types of traps to collect mosquitoes. Uh, we use a gravity trap and VG trap. The gravity traps use stinky water to attract mosquito, and it's specific for the West Nile virus carrying mosquito, Culex. The VG, VG trap is a new trap that we're experiencing this year. It uses dry ice to mimic the human behavior of breathing to attract mosquitoes to the trap itself. This is specific for the Aedes species, which is carries the Zika virus. Uh, with source reduction, I truly believe uh, this is where we have the most room for improvement in our program. Source reduction is basically looking around the city for areas, favorable condition for breeding mosquitoes, and try to physically disturb that environment. For example, tires or bird bath, uh, rain barrel, any times we can have a chance to disturb that environment, we will. The second thing that I'll probably start using if this year or early next year is biological control. Uh, essentially, what I want to do, I want to bring mosquito fish to our city, put it in stagnant water around the city, and they will help us eating l mosquito larvae. So essentially, we want uh, fi uh, fish to work for us next year, hopefully. I've looked this year to getting that fish, and it's, it's hard, but, but I'm almost close to, to make a deal and get some fishes to our city. Larva sighting. Uh, here we spend probably most, most April, Carol Bree most probably spent all April looking for stagnant water and treated by Altacid. Altacid is a type of chemical that you put in water and stays for 120 days to 150 days and kill any mosquito larvae in the water. But since we cannot get to every stagnant, stagnant water in the, in the city, we offer all our citizens, if they come to us, we give them dunks. Basically, it's the same type of, same type of chemical but it's, it could be used by, res, uh, could use by citizen. All what they have to do is just put it in the water and it's supposed to kill mosquito for 30 days. It doesn't have the long lasting effect the Altacid does, but it, it, does, it, it does the purpose and if they come to us, we'll, we'll be happy to give it to them. Adult deciding. When it comes to killing mosquito by chemical, we have three different methods. Number one is what most people know, the ultra low volume. It's basically, um, Machine mounted in the back of the truck, drives around the neighborhood, speed between 10 to 20 miles per hour. It depends on the weather condition, the, the weather, uh, wind speed, and a lot of other factors. It kills mosquitoes as they fly. The, this method has limitation. Basically, the drift of the chemical doesn't go far enough to kill mosquitoes in the backyard, in the alleys, or in, in, in behind fences. We use this method for the Culex species, which is carries the West Nile virus. And the reason we use this method, we, I call it street-to-street -street mosquito fighting, because uh, Culex species have a flight range of a mile to a mile and a half. 
So we have to drive the streets to be able to reach as many as possible. However, we just bought this mist blower. We use this for 80 species, basically the species that carries Zika virus. And the reason we use this backpack uh, mist blower, the, the, the species that carry Zika virus doesn't have a f long flight range. It's mostly 150 to 300 yards. So most likely it stays either in your house or around your house. It doesn't fly far away from the breeding area. So by using this machine, we are able to, to kill most of them. The third method that, that we rarely use is aerial spraying. Sometimes we get to the point in our vector control program where we are doing everything that we can, but the numbers are not going down. Mosquitoes are still out there. At that point, aerial spraying, aerial spraying it's, it's one of our options that we could use. Uh, Dallas County feel that, that cities at this point have to consider if this, if this option is a good option for them. The other thing that we really do, and um, I tell, my, we tell our staff all the time, we have to reach and teach every citizen we can. Uh, we have to let them know what, what's going on when it comes to mosquitoes. Uh, the current activity, the small box on, on, on uh, our website, every time we do anything specific to mosquitoes, we update it. In the, for example, in the winter, if we're doing finding Breeding areas, we write, we type there, hey, updating our citizen. We are looking for breeding areas. If you know any breeding sites, please let, let us know. So we're always updating it. On the right side, the brochures, we use brochures or bulletin boards. We have some, some stuff here in the, in the lobby. So anytime we could share with our citizen or residents anything that's helpful, we will. And the sixth component of any good vector control program is personal protection. It doesn't matter how hard we work out there we still ask the citizen to help us. And we do that by asking them to use insecticide that contain deed, dress long sleeves, drain standing water in and around your home. The last one, a few years ago, it used to be dusk and dark. Now it's day, dusk, and dark. So I suspect probably CDC will take that out sentence very soon, probably in the coming five years. For CDC, that's fast. Uh, we're gonna take it out because, unfortunately, the Zika virus mosquito it's active during the day. Uh, so that, that sentence would probably be out, and that's why we, but we still ask our citizens, specifically item number three, to drain any standing water around their homes to help us fight mosquitoes. In City of Coppell, we have two main viruses that we deal with, uh, we're dealing with right now, the West Nile virus and the Zika virus. We have a plan to deal with each one of them. The plan consists of four different levels. City of Coppell and Environmental Health, we always assume we're at level one. We always have mosquito, so we have to do everything possible to get rid of it. So we do the surveillance, we do the source reduction, larviciding, we do everything but, but spraying. When it comes to level two, that's where we do everything we did in level one, but we start either doing the, the, the truck spraying or mist blower. When gets to number three, which that's we add between three and four right now. We're doing everything possible to get rid of mosquitoes, but we're not keeping up with demand. At level number four, that's where Dallas County comes say, it's a state of emergency, we want you to aerial spray. At level number four. The main difference between those two level, two different plans, the first one, the main response for West Nile virus is ground spraying, basically trucks around your neighborhood. The Zika, the Zika plan, it's barrier treatments. It's, it's walking around your neighborhood and spray with, with mist blower. And that's that the item 11 on the agenda. is consider approval of resolution authorizing the city manager to provide written notice to Dallas County Health and Human Services for aerial spraying for mosquito control in the 2015-2016 vector season. But before we do that, I'd like to go over five critical data points that I monitor very closely every week. Number one, the milestones, abundance, number of positive sample, West Nile virus index, and human cases. The milestones, when I look at milestones every year, I wanna know when, when do we get the first positive. This year we got it July, June 24th, and I like to compare that to other years. Like if we look at the other years, we look at 2012, we got it June 26th. So almost identical to that date. But, 2012 probably was the worst 
gear for West Nile virus on record in the United States. But something happens in 2012. If we look at the last, last positive, it, it happened in August 14. That's very early. Usually, the last positive, it goes all the way to October. So what happened at that date? We aerial sprayed four days after that. We collected the sample a 21st, the 21st of August, and we did not get any positive after that date. So from 2012, first-hand experience, we know that aerial spraying does help us contain the virus. I like to look at abundance. I look at that every week. Every week, the first thing Monday morning I do, I look, I look at this data. How many mosquitoes do we have out there? How many mosquitoes are we collecting? This year, the, the blue bar, it's how many mosquitoes we collected by July 26 for the last four years. And if you look, we have 5,354 5, mosquitoes. And that's if you look at the last three years, that's more than all of them. That's actually more than what we collected in 2013 total. And then I look at about, because I like to isolate the problematic, I like to know where the, the problem areas. I like to isolate it. In order to do that, I like to always have the data about how many traps are we getting with 100 mosquitoes or more in it. At this point, we have 20 t 22. That's double what we had last year, five times more than we had in 2014, and 11 times what we had in 2013. So obviously, we have a problem. We have more mosquitoes than we had previous years. And then, I look at positive samples, because if we have a lot of mosquitoes, if we have abundance, but we don't have any positive samples, we only have a nuisance problems. But if we have abundance and we have a lot of positive samples, we have a virus problem. So I look, how many positive samples are we getting? So far, it's 14. So if we look at the previous 15, 14, and 13, total we got in 15, 16 samples. In 14, 13, and 2013, we get eight samples. The only year that comes close to that is 2012. Now I like to look at human cases. Human cases by July 26 in 2012 we had one. Total we had five. I don't like this data or, or to provide this data, but I had to because there's almost one month lag between when people get sick and when we get the data. So we don't know if we have anybody by July 26 or not. It's going to take us to August 26 to go through public, uh, Dallas County Public Health and for us to give us this data. But I had to provide it. So we had one by 2012. We had zero 2016. So this is this chart. I'm going to explain it very quick. Uh, West Nile virus index. Basically, those all the components that we looked at, the population density of the mosquito and the infection rate, essentially you multiply them by each other. If we look at week 25 to 27, 24 to 26, it's almost identical to 20, 2012. The data, the, if it's above 0 0.5, that's when aerial spraying has to be considered. Well, we reached that at week 26, which is considered very early. That's the same date we reached it in 2012. Week 27, 28, if you look at the virus, the, the virus index, it went down. And right here, the chart shows it how it goes down. And the reason it, it went down, it rained every time we it rained on the weekend that week twice. And usually when it rains, we are not able to get a good sample of mosquitoes because a lot of times it, it, it flushes out of the stagnant water. So we're not able to get a, an accurate data for those weeks. So it, it dipped down, but it's still higher than the other years, 13, 14, and 15. Now, the first positive we got is June 24th. So what happens since June 24th? We have six traps around the city. That week, we got four out of six. 66% of our traps were infected. Well, July 1st, again, 66%. And then we thought we had, we really have control of the problem the second week of July. We have one of six. We were very happy. The second week of July, third week of July started going up to two out of six, 33%. Yesterday, when we got the results back, was three out of six. So still, 50% of our traps is still infected. So since June 24th, we have 46 of our sample are positive for West Nile virus. And this kind of frustrated because every time we have a positive sample, we spray twice. So that's doing everything on the ground to control the problem, but we're still not able to get those numbers down. 
And that's exactly why Dallas County feel that, that having the conversation about aerial spraying is, is very critical to be able to get those numbers down. And I'm open for any questions. Oh, well, let me go this one. So I usually try to isolate it. So I said maybe if we have one trap, one area bad, maybe we could go walk the area, try to find the breeding sites, and maybe we solve it that way. Well, the problem is we cannot isolate it. Like you can tell, the only good area really we have is MacArthur Park. Every other area, North MacArthur, three samples, uh, Moore Street, Velowood, three, Parkway here at the core, three, Coverstone, two, Blackburn, two. So it's really hard for us to say, you know what, we have one bad area, let's go focus on that area and find the breeding sites. We haven't been able to do that because the data is not helping us to do that. And that's exactly, I think, why aerial spraying is the extremely effective way to get control of those numbers and get them down. Well, let's see how we're doing at our milestones, our, our critical points. The milestones, we're not doing so good. Abundance, we know we have a lot of mosquitoes. Positive samples, we know we have a lot. West Nile virus index, I kept it in the yellow because it's, I mean, it's still early to get that data. It's still because there ain't it one down. And human cases is the only cases really I kept it in the green because this is the only thing we don't have the reports yet to indicate it's gonna be in the red or the green. And I believe that's my last slide. I'm open for your questions. Council, questions, comments? Yes, sir. I want to ask you a, a couple of questions. Um, where you had that stat about tra uh, traps with over 100 mosquitoes, uh, I think it was 22 at this point. Yes, sir. Um, is that the Culex mosquito, or is that a combination of the of both types? No, that's specifically Culex mosquitoes. Okay, so yeah, not, we, go ahead. not the one that carries the Zika virus and flies during the day? Uh, no, sir, this is specific for Culex okay. mosquitoes. Uh, okay. we do that, when we get the result from Dallas County, they do separate them based on female mosquito, male mosquito, and what species it is. Oh, okay, great. And then um, in um, 2016, when you had the abundance of, of cases, um, and I think that uh, the kind of the end of this mosquito season was at 812 or 815, something like that. That was after the aerial spraying. Did before, yeah, the last positive. Before that, did you do um, ground spraying as well? We, we, we did, but our program evolved since 2012. In 2012, we only sprayed once. So if we have a positive mosquitoes, we would go out there and only spray once. So now to tell you how, you know, how different this year is, we sprayed it twice and we still have the problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Mays. Thank you, Mayor. Louis, one of your early slides was showing the, the levels of, that we go through, the stages. Um, thank you. So we haven't actually had the multiple human cases yet. Um, so what's your, your basis for, for promoting the aerial spring at this point? Okay. When we have multiple human cases, that's almost not our option to aerial spray or not to. That's when the Dallas County comes in. Where we're at right now, we have multiple mosquito samples, and that's why we have to have the conversation here if we're going to aerial spray or not. Because, you know, you aerial spray when your West Nile virus index goes above 0 0.5, or we're doing everything on the ground and not able to get those numbers down. Uh, I don't like to talk about West Nile virus index for city of Coppell because it's just a small sample, but if we, I want to calculate it for the last five, six weeks, it's above 2.49, the average. So that's almost five times where it should be. But it's a small sample, so scientifically it shouldn't be a valid sample. But for our city, it's still valid. What, is, uh, what does Dallas County look like when you take a look at the... I'm, have they had multiple human cases yet? You know, mesquite, uh, mesquite is probably the worst in the county right now. Uh, probably the up to 64 samples, but mesquite is a larger city. Irving is, is having a very bad year, and so is Carrollton, just east of us. Well, Denton announced this morning that they had the second confirmed uh, human case as well. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Member Hinojosa Flores. <clears throat> Louie, thank you for this information. Quick question. Um, if, if we proceed with the aerial spraying, what's the timing on that for that to happen? And then how often does that occur? 
Okay. We have, as we speak, we probably have three other city councils considering this decision. decision. Uh, we don't have the exact date yet because there's some other cities council meeting next, uh, next week, next week is August 2nd. Once they get all this information, they probably give us a timeline and more information about logistics, how it's exactly gonna go. But if we decide to go to Earl Spray, we will give our cities and residents enough information to know exactly what's gonna happen and what they need to do and, and all that stuff. And, and so when that happens, so it would be a, just a one-time aerial spray? It, it's probably be two applications, two, applications, two nights okay. in a row. And it would be to cover the entire city, right? Not just the areas that you just mentioned right now that happen to be a high Multi frequency. Yeah. No, it'll be the, the, the whole city. Uh, one question. Um, the last time you said that we did, that w the last time we did aerial spraying was 12? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and the thing that I remember about that is that there was a um, emergency situation. So I had to, as the mayor at that time, within the first several months of the time I was mayor, um, had to declare an emergency. And so what this does is gives us taking this action allows that to happen as a matter of course and gives um, the city manager the option to, or not the option, but the authority to go ahead and get that accomplished. So last time that we actually did um, uh, aerial spraying, there were multiple cases and it was a state of emergency. So this, um, this action, in my view, is um, looking ahead as to um, what can potentially happen. So, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. So would that, you know, I, quite honestly, the number of cases is, I was expecting to see it decline with the weather, but then now we've gotten some rain and so forth, so there's no telling. If, our, if the number of confirmed mosquitoes did decline, would our city manager or you have the option to not spray at that point? What we will do is, is monitor what the other cities are doing as well because the county's not going to want to spray one city. Uh, they're going to want a more broad application than that to have any chance of being effective. So we'll monitor what's going on in the other cities. I know uh, Louie's right. There's two or three cities meeting tonight. Yes, sir. Pondering the same question. The only, the, I think the only absolute no we've gotten so far was Sunnyvale, maybe? Uh, yes, sir. I believe that's correct. And, uh, but I know Carrollton's considering it, did this afternoon. I haven't heard the outcome of their, their contemplation yet, and others are doing the same. So... Uh, if if we don't see some kind of better experience, then I would think uh, if y'all see fit to give us the authority to do, to, to do the spraying uh, when the time comes to do it with others, I think we would step up and do so at that point. Council Member Hill. Um, I wanted to ask you one other question. Um, it, what type of collateral damage to the environment or beneficial um, insects could occur? This year we're using a, a new product that's approved by the FDA, EBA, and CDC to be safe around urban areas. Uh, this, this product doesn't have any adverse effect on, on non-target species. Uh, basically any non-target species, butterflies and, all, and, and any in bees and all that. We're still probably gonna tell bees, beekeeper to, to cover the beehives that night just to protect them and then tell people not to go outside. But this is very specific for mosquitoes and the dosage that we are using is extremely small. So per acre we probably use 0 0.5 ounces of chemical, uh, which is extremely, extremely small. Uh, for anything to be very toxic, we probably have to use, uh, uh, probably the application rate has to be higher, but we are sticking with a lower application rate just to, mo to make sure that we're only targeting mosquitoes. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. that. My pleasure. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Council Member Franklin. Thank you, Mayor Hunt. Um, Move to approve um, item, item 12. 12, sorry, thank you. So I think it was 11 in your presentation. Mm -hmm. so Second you. by Councilmember Hinojosa Flores. All in favor? 
Long, Hinojosa Flores, Mays, Franklin Hill. None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the information. Thank you, ma'am. My Thank pleasure. You.